We want to dig back into the markets here. And for that, we're going to bring in Ted Oakley. He is the Oxbow Advisors Managing Partner. And Ted, what are you making of the price action today? Because I'm looking at the markets here. Usually at this time of the year, we don't have that much volatility. Markets are gearing and market participants gearing up for maybe a Santa Claus rally, people thinking ahead to 2022, but we got some headwinds right now. Well, Jerry, we do. You know, what happens a lot of times, you come in and do uh, the very last part of the year and if people have, you know, they've, they've etched some really good gains and all of a sudden they're starting to, th starting to think, okay, hey, well, maybe they get away from me. And I think that's part of what you're getting right now. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that that would probably, you know, last for more than, you know, a few weeks or so, but it could. I think the biggest thing right now is there's a number of headwinds coming at us now. One is probably all of a sudden they're pricing in, you know, peak hawkishness from the Fed. And secondly, uh, probably not going to totally go away with this inflation thing. And lastly, you know, you just had such a speculative market that it's easy for it to start getting some selling. And so that's where I think we are at this point. And sir, what happens to the growth story next year as you look at your outlook for 2022? Well, I think what happens for 22 is that the growth will slow. I think it has to. I think between inflation and a lot of programs are cutting off. If you look at uh, a lot of the money that would normally go to consumers, you know, there's a the SNAP program, which is sort of a, a an extra food stamp thing that's been going on. That goes away. You know, the child uh, care tax credit goes away. You have to start paying back your student loans next year. All of that gets sucked out of that economy right now. And when you get into that and start looking at it, in addition, you have inflation. So consumer spending probably is where it takes it on the chin. And that's why we forecast really uh, slower times when you get into 22. So thinking about that, what kind of sectors, industries, styles um, are you looking at for at least the beginning of 2022? How are you positioning yourself to weather uh, the headwinds that we're talking about that are on the horizon? Well, Jared, we have uh, three strategies, which are a growth strategy and uh, an income strategy that's designed to beat the bond market, even though we don't own any bonds in it. And then we have a really conservative strategy. But in let me just say in the st growth strategy, we have about, uh, really about 25% liquid in there right now. And we don't, we're, we will never apologize for holding cash. It's always been a great thing for us when times got poor. But we own companies in there that we think can do well, uh, even through a poor economic period. If you look at a lot of the companies we own, we think they can make, they can move 15% a year. I'm talking in terms of their numbers, maybe not the stock, but they can make 15% a year or so for the next five years. We like that kind of stock, all right? In the income side, you know, we still like uh, we still like the gas pipelines. We like we own a lot of preferreds. We think they'll hold well, especially the too big to fail bank preferreds. And you'll see we own about uh, we own four or five REITs primarily. Uh, most of those are medical REITs because we don't think they would have a problem with the economy. Um, and so if we mix all of that together, and we've got a lot of liquidity there too, about 35%. Uh, and then, and we made a shift on the conservative fixed income account. We haven't bought any bonds longer than a couple of years until starting about six weeks ago. And what we've done now, and people have to realize this, when you go into a flat yield curve, you need to own some things short because those yields are going to crank up with the Fed, but you also own the long bonds because people will look at that and say, hey, we're going into a recession. I want to own the, the very long treasury. And so we have some of that as too. So that's how we're sort of positioned right now. And Ted, what happens to the profit margin story next year? Because this year earnings were the big winner, right? But as inflation continues to uh, you know, persist, what happens then to companies who will feel the squeeze in their profit margins? What should happen is we would get, what well, I think there'll be, I think they know that now. You know, I've seen some earnings come out the last few days of companies that normally consistently beat and they've had trouble. And I think what happens next year is just a continuation of the fact that they've just finished peak margins. I don't think those margins will be there again. And so as they go through the quarters of next year, I think two things happen to them. One, their prices go up and two, probably their wages grow up to an extent. And when that happens, 
it comes out of those margins and that's in the in the and actually the revenues go down and so all of those come together and i think a lot of those companies will suffer that when you get into 22. Yeah, I don't have a very favorable view of what they call the zombies either, as we see these rising interest rates. But we'll have to leave that for next year. And we'll have to leave this here. Really appreciate you joining us. Ted Oakley, Oxbow Advisors Managing Partner.